Well, if you play sports, let's face it, it's a lot more fun to win than it is to lose. Sometimes you get an exciting squeaker type game. Hey, it happened yesterday between the Seattle Seahawks and the Green Bay Packers, and certainly Packer fans were really not very happy at the outcome, but it was an exciting game all the way. However, here's a bit of a point spread between the winner and the loser. <laughs> a California high school coach who coaches the uh, California um, San Bernardino, California High School Girls Arroyo Valley High School saw his team win 161 to two. Somehow the other team managed to either score a couple of uh, uh, free throws or uh, flung a basket in there at some point. Um, he, in fact, the winning coach stopped playing his starters uh, when they went into the second half. But now, David Menzies, this coach has been suspended. Yeah, by the way, that is the amazing thing about this story. How did the other team get two points when it's a 159-point differential? Yeah. But, you know, um, I don't get this, uh, Jerry. As you mentioned, the coach did bench his starters and under what rule do you suspend this coach show me something tangible that says that says thou shalt not go above I don't know 45 55 65 points in a basketball game because you know you're in a damned if you do damned if you don't scenario this team he was grooming as I understand for league play which are I, I take it the more serious games this was the last game in their in their local loop it's a, a weak team obviously the score showed that yeah but what what are you supposed to do and and secondly isn't it humiliating too if you're on a weak team and you know the opposition is purposely uh, you know, just, uh, you know, taking shots that are going to miss or in hockey, only shooting from behind the red line. You know, so I think this is harsh. And I think the message is, you know what, if you're an achiever and an overachiever, you are going to be penalized. Well, that's what happened here. By the way, the team went on to not as big a, uh, a point spread sc uh, score in their next game without the coach, but they won 80 to 12 or something like that. Yeah. They're obviously a fantastic team. If, if they're that concerned about it, they need to put in some kind of mercy rule. Uh, they were slaughtered in the first half. Then they, they could just say, let's not play the second half. Or, hey, we got time on our hands here. Let's just choose up teams between us, switch some uniforms around, and just have a fun scrimmage. Well, yeah, it, 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 you're assuming that would be allowed and that would be fine yeah just have the other team basically say we default yeah and now let's switch players around and have a fun game but you know I think what the problem is Jerry the the photograph being shown in the newspaper stories about this is that scoreboard yeah we saw it a moment ago one to two right? yeah Look there it that. is oh and the here's here's the thing I know in hockey you know my sons play hockey I know when you're in house at the house league level at least um, when you go beyond a five goal spread, right? So once it's like five nothing, if the team scores six, seven, eight nothing, the scoreboard still shows five nothing. The scores are being kept, right? Yes. On paper. But in the arena, for anyone walking in or anyone looking at the scoreboard, it's a five nothing game, right? So maybe that's what they should have done. They should have, okay. you know. Some people say, well, somebody wrote to me and said, uh, well, Don Cherry says you shouldn't run up the score. Yeah, but I bet you Don Cherry wouldn't su suspend a coach who did it. All right, uh, another sports story here now. Uh, I don't know if this is sour grapes or what it is, but the Patriots are being accused again of uh, <laughs> cheating in the 45-7 to victory over the Colts yesterday. They're saying that what the Patriots did was let some of the air out of the ball uh, easier to grip, uh, would work better in the rain. Well, you know, And that's illegal, by the way. Uh, it is illegal, and under the NFL rules, the home t each team is supposed to bring 12 game balls, and the home team is supposed to have an additional 12 substitute game balls, so that's a total of 36. Um, Here's the thing I don't understand, Jerry. If you are doing this, unless there's a way to do a switcheroo, isn't the deflated ball going to help Indianapolis? I mean, they're playing in the same stadium under the same weather conditions, right? Yeah. So that, it, That's right. When you're done as the offense, you don't take your ball and go <laughs> off to the sideline and the Colts bring out their game ball and play with it. Because that would be the real scandal. But, yeah. but here's the thing. The league is actually investigating this. But talk about a joke. This is the – it's almost the flip side of the story we were talking about uh, earlier with the basketball coach getting – suspended two games. If indeed the Patriots were doing this, Jerry, guess what? You know what the penalty is? 
$25,000 fine. No, no, no. No, it's worse than that. Oh, really? Yes, they give up a draft pick. They had to do that. Are you sure about that? Uh, That's what I've been reading. Uh, Um, They gave up a draft pick for videotaping the New York Jets coach's signals uh, back in 2007, I think, plus $750,000 in total fines. But I read it was only a $25,000 fine if you you, uh, maliciously tamper with a football. Do you think that maybe the players of the and the coaches of the New England Patriots could pass the hat and come up with that in the dressing room? <laughs> I think the water boys on NFL teams <laughs> could pass the hat. And come up with that. Here's the problem, though, that Belichick has to worry about, and maybe uh, Tom Brady and the rest of them, yeah. is that stories like this will catch on, especially with the fans of the team that lost, because, in fact, the Patriots have been caught cheating in the past. They have been caught cheating in the past. And, and that's their the own fault. And, and remember, Jerry, this got leaked by the infamous source known as unnamed yet again he's done it again yeah Uh, here's what i want to know isn't it part of the ref's duty to weigh the ball periodically to make you know and check the pressure to make sure that this is a game ready football and so why weren't they doing their job and how did this unnamed source I mean, who is this person? Here's, again, another issue, Jerry, that I have a problem with unnamed sources. I mean, this could be totally made up. To, uh, paper out of Boston yep. reports, if the league investigation confirms that the Patriots used deflated footballs, it would result in lost draft picks for the Patriots. Oh, I stand corrected. The story I read okay, only said that's a lot more serious. That's huge. Although it happened to them before, and apparently they've done okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who do you like in the Super Bowl, by the way? Well, uh, I don't like them, but I, I think it'll probably be New England, actually. Yeah, I know. It's, this, uh, these two teams I really detest. It's kind of like the tagline for Aliens versus Predator. No matter who wins, we lose. I mean, like, who, yeah. who, do, you, who do you root for, right? Uh, well, it's one of those things. I forget who, who said this first, and it was more of a, a geopolitical thing. But it's a real shame they both can't lose. Yeah, oh, no, in, indeed. And, uh, but, and, and going back to the basketball coach then, Jerry, what do you think – that he should have suffered that uh, that two-game suspension? No, I think that if uh, if um, a league, whether it's a school league or whatever it is, has a game like that, it's 161 to 2. We don't like that. Okay, let's get together and figure out then a set of rules like the one you mentioned where uh, we stop the clock and said, or we turn the clock off. Right. Or we just declare, look, you've lost the game, okay? We're going to turn the clock off and uh, just have as much fun as you want. Come up with a different solution because what really bothers me about it is I understand where people are coming from. Don't run up the score, all of that. But by suspending him, they have punished success. And this goes along with what we talk about so often on this show and on this network, and that is the the whole idea that if people have been successful in life, they just got lucky, so we feel good taking their money and giving it to somebody else. Like, you know, it's it's almost like I'm surprised they didn't come up with a a plan where, okay, after you've scored 50 points, every uh, two that you score, we're going to give one to the other team. Indeed. And do we want to adopt the model of soccer in this country, which is under 11, Jerry. There are no standings kept. There are no scores kept. And everybody at the end of the season gets a participant trophy. And my point of view is this. There is no shame in honest failure. Maybe a, a, a soccer team and a kid, you know, should take a thrashing out on the field and maybe the character building exercises, how do we respond to this? How, how do we come back and make sure this doesn't happen again? What's yeah. wrong with that? I think it's a poor lesson to say nobody should have to suffer a loss, although I will say this, because I've had, my kids are older than that now, but my kids have played soccer when they were little, and you might not be keeping score officially. Ask the kids who won. They know the scores. They know who's scoring. That, that's the joke. And even the final games, it's a, like a, a de facto championship. They've kept everything in their mind. Yeah. And, and also, those kids, Jerry, that get that participant trophy, it's basically used as a doorstop. It is considered it by nothing. kids. It's worthless. Yeah. And they know it. You can Kids are smarter than we uh, give them credit for. Yeah, well, no. Some of them grow up to be income redistributionists. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs>